These are 50 reasons why the United States is a terrifying place to live, and no, I'm not talking about our school systems. I'm talking about the Flatwoods Monster of West Virginia and the Prairie Devils of Texas, and many more monsters that are said to lurk in the shadows of this country. So grab some popcorn and a pickle, and let's get started on this list from A to Z. Alabama. If you're in the North Alabama woods and hear a blood-curdling scream as if it was a woman, it may be a cougar, or it may just be the white thing. If you see it, it would be around 7 to 8 feet tall with white fur and a large snout. Others have caught sight of its face and described it like that of a lion. Some mention that it has the face of a kangaroo. What we can gather is that the Alabama white thing has a snout and known to move incredibly fast. Alaska If you managed to capture definitive proof of Illy the lake monster, you would have just earned yourselves $100,000. The Anchorage Daily News had put this offer out, but nobody has yet to claim it. Ilya is said to be in the waters of the largest lake in Alaska, Ilyama. Those that have encountered this creature state that it's anywhere between 25 to 60 feet long. It has shark-like features, but also resembles a whale. Unfortunately, Ilya the lake monster remains a legend until someone snaps a clear picture to prove otherwise and claim that hundred grand. Arizona. While the legend of trolls does not originate within the states, it is incredibly odd that one was said to have been seen in Arizona. A man known as I.W. Stevens came forward reporting that he had seen this troll-like creature in the Grand Canyon. He said that it had long white hair and a matted beard that reached all the way down to his knees. And thank God it did because he also said the troll was butt naked. Also, Stevens continued observing the naked troll, for scientific reasons of course, he saw that it had a coat of gray hair that covered its body almost entirely. He kept watching this thing as it picked up a couple of cougars and began drinking their blood. And as it did so, the troll turned and looked directly over at Stevens. The troll picked up a club and roared out at the man, at which point I'm assuming he ran away. This could just be a story, but everything is until proven otherwise. Arkansas. You better be on the lookout if you're ever in Herber Springs, Arkansas, because it's said to be the home of a monster. Nope, uh-uh, we're not doing this. It's said to be the home of the water panther, specifically Fairy Lake Greers and the Little Red River, and it's believed to be able to breathe underwater. It's said to resemble an odd combination of a puma and a Bigfoot. And like all monsters, it's said to give off a terrifying scream. Either way, just be careful when you decide to wait in the waters of any lake. Sightings have begun dwindling down in the last several years, but that tends to happen when folks stay inside rather than exploring the outdoors. California. In 1958, Charles Wetzel was traveling through the city of Riverside as he approached where Main Street crossed over the Santa Ana River when he saw something that could only be seen as a monster. And unlike people who see something and don't really get a good look at it, Wetzel said that he could see it very clearly and was able to describe it in great detail. He said that it was tall and stood on two legs with the longest arms he'd ever seen. The hands were clawed and its body was covered in leaf-like scales. And to top it all off, it had a head like that of a scarecrow with glowing eyes. No ears or nose, but had a mouth that protruded and gurgled. Nobody has seen this thing in the last 60 years, but maybe that just means he's the last one to have actually survived to tell the tale. Colorado This monster has a particular taste for tourists, so all you locals, I guess you're safe. The slide rock bolter is a fish-like creature that lives in the mountainous regions of Colorado. It's said to have a hooked tail and preys on tourists. One of the first accounts of this monster goes all the way back to the 1910 novel The Fearsome Creatures of Lumberwoods by William T. Cox. The legends say that this creature was killed in an explosion because a local ranger tricked it into crashing into a barrel of gunpowder and fulminated caps. This explosion was said to have destroyed half the buildings in Rico, Colorado. However, the real town of Rico still stands, and if this monster was blown to smithereens, then why is it still being sighted? Seems a little fishy to me. Connecticut. Goactus. Sorry, Gloacus. This unknown creature takes on similar behavior of the infamous Chupacabra. The Gloacus was said to be the cause of animal mutilations and was described as looking like a bear, dog, cat creature. And it wasn't just one, but a small group of them that were eating cats, small dogs, and any animal that wasn't too big to scare it off. While some theorize as to what the Gloacus is, there's no telling what was terrorizing the small towns of Connecticut. But don't worry, 
The last sighting of these little monsters was said to be in the 1950s. If you're out in the woods at night and hear an odd form of howling, you may just be in the presence of the Glowacus. Delaware. If you find yourself in the waters of Luz, Delaware, and you feel something grab you, that might just be the Zwanendale Merman. The first reported sighting of the Zwanendale Merman was back in 1632 by a group of Dutch settlers. They claimed to have seen a creature swimming the waters near their town. And it was so horrifying to these men, they up and moved their entire settlement. You know it's bad when grown men in the 1600s just want to move their entire town somewhere else. We should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else! And this isn't the only case of somebody seeing it. 1632, Dutch settlers. 1700, a man walking along the beach saw the creature standing on the shore. 1800, a woman fishing in the bay saw him near her boat. 1900, a group of children playing on the beach saw the merman swimming in the surf. 2000, man kayaking in the bay saw it swimming near his kayak. Just be careful in the waters near this area. This honestly sounds terrifying. And let me just say, if you're really into monsters of all sorts, then you gotta check out this book here. It helped me find some inspiration for several of the monsters on this list, and there's still room for a lot more. If you use the link to buy a copy, it helps support the channel, and that's always greatly appreciated. Otherwise, let's move on. Florida. The dreaded Florida man is said to roam the streets at night. He's unpredictable in the best of conditions, and capable of climbing trees just like Tarzan in order to evade authorities. I'm just kidding, I couldn't help myself. Florida. The Hutchko Chopko is a seminal legend, and this word means long ears. It's said to look like a gray wolf-like monster, but has the tail of a horse. Like its name states, it is supposed to have very long ears. This was said to only live in the rocky terrain and reeked like something awful. And along with this stench, it's also said to carry a lot of diseases. And you know, we could say that this was just a legend, if it wasn't spotted in 1951 by Mrs. Lawrence Laub. She encountered a creature that she described as a cross between a wolf and a deer. She threw a stick at the animal, but all it did was watch and stare at her until she went home. But get this, even her husband had a similar encounter with this creature two years prior, but never told her about it as to not frighten her. This could just be a wolf, or this could be something much, much worse. Georgia. This is one of my favorite creatures of all Cherokee legend, the Horned Serpent. If you run into one of these terrifying creatures, you better be wearing sunglasses or else the blinding light that is emitting from the stone atop its head will shine so bright, it will cause you to go mad and run directly towards the Ukte Na rather than away. The only way to defeat this creature is by piercing its impenetrable hide. I know that's an oxymoron, but there's a catch. The seventh spot or the seventh ring on the creature's body is its weak spot because the seventh marking on its body is right where its heart is located. I have a fuller video on this topic, but I think it's due for an update. Hawaii. The Mo'o Water Guardians are the protectors of every single pool, pond, and stream in all of Hawaii, and you may not even notice them until it's too late. The Mo'o are said to be able to change forms from the smallest gecko into massive dragons. They have supernatural powers and can control the weather. This comes in handy to ensure that the island has a fruitful harvest, but if they're ever angered, they can also use this power to cause massive waves to take out specific targets. But if you want to be safe, then just drop a flower into the water of the pool or pond you want to get in. If it gets swept away, that means you're not welcomed and should go somewhere else. It's a good reminder to just respect nature. Idaho. This monster is said to live in Pyatt Lake near McCall. The Native Americans living near the lake believe that there was an evil spirit that resided. And in 1920, Western settlers actually caught a glimpse of this creature. Later on in 1944, a group of people claimed to have seen it in great detail and said it was 35 feet long with a dinosaur type head with humps like a camel. It was rumored to be spotted again in 1946, but the description was not given for this sighting. The reason they call this monster Charlie is actually because of a contest held in 1954. The phrase, Vas you dear Charlie, was a popular catchphrase on the radio by Jack Pearl. And I guess they just liked it. Illinois. In a newspaper clipping from the Mount Vernon Register News, a man known as McDaniel told of his encounter with an unknown creature and how it was trying to get inside his home. McDaniel was returning home from a conference and was getting comfy when he heard something scratching at the door. So being the absolute Chad that he was, he opened the door to see the creature standing right in front of him. He said it had three legs, two short arms, 
stood about four feet tall, was grayish in color, and had two pink eyes as big as the end of a flashlight. So he does the sensible thing and slams the door closed to go get his revolver, but when he opened the door, it was already on its way off. It was about 12 feet away, but still he managed to miss every shot he took. A young boy had also claimed that he had a separate encounter with something similar, but aside from these two instances, I haven't read anything about any more since then, and honestly, thank God, it's one more reason to have a peephole on your door. Indiana If you've ever seen a snapping turtle and felt a primal sense of fear as soon as those jaws chomped down, this is going to make you need to change your pants. The beast of Busco is not only said to be a snapping turtle, but a monster of one at that. It was seen in 1898 by farmer Oscar Folk, and when he tried to tell the people of Churubusco, it didn't really go anywhere, so he decided to forget about it. Then, 50 years later, two citizens of Churubusco saw just what the farmer was talking about. The beast of Busco was legend to have weighed 500 pounds and resided in Folk Lake. And just for a reference, this is the largest documented wild-caught alligator snapping turtle, which was caught in Texas, and weighed 211 pounds. That means what was seen back then was about 2.5 times bigger than this monster. Just be careful if you ever go swimming in Folk Lake. Iowa When you make your way through Burlington, the city, not the coat factory, you're going to want to keep an eye on the sky just in case you spot a dragon. In recent years, a number of Burlington citizens have reported seeing several dragons flying high in the air. It was described as having a head like a seahorse with 15-foot wings that appeared bat-like, a snake-like body, and its skin was brown and almost leathery in appearance. But it isn't just recently, but all the way back in 1887 that these monsters were reported. A man named Lee Corder said he had encountered a flying serpent. He said it had the typical features of protruding eyes and a forked tongue. Then, in 1890 in October, it was seen again, but not much is known about the sighting. The most recent sighting was in 2005 by a woman and her husband. The woman just goes by Megan, and her husband's name is unknown. She claimed that she saw the dragon flying while they were driving on the streets of Burlington in the middle of the night. This one was 10 feet long, snake-like, with bat-like wings, and a head similar to that of a seahorse. I'm not certain, but I don't think Megan and her husband spend much time reading old newspapers and reports from the 1800s, so the fact that they managed to describe almost exactly what was first seen is incredible. Kansas Imagine walking through the woods of Kansas, and you end up feeling like you stepped back in time as you look into the sky and see some sort of pterosaur. Pterosaurs are said to have actually been native to Kansas about a bajillion years ago. So, seeing them almost sounds as though it's just a tall tale, but these dinosaurs have been seen by multiple eyewitnesses. There's not much to say about their sighting, other than they saw it. There wasn't an attack or a run for their life, but these things have also been seen in multiple places all around the world. Sounds like those millions of years may have been a lot closer than we thought. Kentucky This one is actually one of my favorites, and I have an entire video all about this encounter, but to be brief, a family was having a get-together when a man goes out to get some water from a well. Well, he looks up into the sky and sees a shining metallic object and watches as it crashes a good ways away from their home. They live in the remote Kentucky woods, so he was the only one to have seen it. But afterwards, this family was harassed by countless little goblin-like creatures. The entire family saw them and all detailed their encounter with the police in the middle of the night. No one has ever said it was a lie or a hoax. And to make it even more wild, the men reported that they were fighting them off with their rifles the entire night, but each time their bullets met their mark, the little goblin-like creatures would stumble back and float back into the forest. Best to have your wits about you in the Kentucky forest late at night. Also, no, they were not drunk. The mama of the family did not allow alcohol on their property. Louisiana. This is one of those times that you do not want to follow the light into the dark of the swamp. Le Fufolet is a type of Cajun fairy. It's capable of taking the form of loved ones, but to those it's not feeling too friendly towards, it appears as a ball of light off in the distance. It does this in the hopes that you will follow the light, expecting to be wandering back towards town, but it will only lead you deeper and deeper into the swamp until you drown. When you pair this with the Lugaroo and just alligators themselves, there's not a whole lot of reason to go walking off in the dark swamps of Louisiana. Maine You've probably heard of the Kawakwa before, but you've just been calling it Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Well, the Wabanaki, who were here long before the Patterson-Gimlin film, already knew about these gigantic humanoid creatures. These are a bit more monstrous. 
They're said to have a taste for human flesh, and its hunting really picks up during the winter. It's also said that the Kawakwa may just be a man under a curse. This makes it sound much like a wendigo, but without the requirement of it being cold. Either way, if you're out in the woods and hear hollering, tree knocks, or samurai chatter, it could be the Kawakwa, or just a Bigfoot hunter looking for Bigfoot. Marilyn. This monster goes back to ancient times, ancient Greek times. The Snallygaster is said to be a chimera with various features. It's similar to a dragon, bird, and for some reason has tentacles. This monster has only been seen in Maryland. The first sightings of this creature go back to 1909, around the same time when people began reporting sightings of the Jersey Devil. Coincidence? I think not! The name Snallygaster has its roots in the German words Schnellergeist, which means quick spirit or ghost. Sarah Cooper actually runs the American Snallygaster Museum, which features various other monsters said to call Maryland home. Massachusetts. This is just a reminder if you live out in the country and let your pets out, tell them you love them because you might not see them in the morning. The Beast of Truro's reign of terror began in the 80s, 1981 to be specific. Originally, everyone assumed it was a pack of dogs that were taking out their cats, cattle, and even hogs, but that was before the first sighting. It was described as a large, furry creature. Now, you may be saying, well, hold on, that was probably just a mountain lion. Well, perhaps it could have been, except the last mountain lion to have been seen in Massachusetts was in the 50s, the 1850s. Either this mountain lion came to this town just to ruin these people's day, or there's something else out there in the woods of Massachusetts. Michigan. In 1812, while traveling through Lake Superior with some Ojibwa Native Americans, a group of French-Canadian trappers looked into the waters and something was looking back. Its upper torso was about the size of a child's. The face was dark complected and it had curly hair. They couldn't see too far into the water, but it appeared to have fish-like qualities. You and I would call this a mermaid or perhaps a merman, but the Ojibwa that he was traveling with already knew of these creatures and called them memiguashis. To a lot of the natives, the memiguashi or mer people are spiritual beings or spiritual brothers and sisters capable of causing great storms to occur which is something very peculiar considering the trappers attempted to shoot the Memiguashi and failed, but shortly after, it stormed non-stop for three days. Minnesota. This isn't the character from X-Men, but potentially the only physical proof of Sasquatch. The Minnesota Iceman was a sideshow exhibit and considered by many to be an elaborate hoax, but that still remains unknown. During the 1960s and 1970s, it was shown off at carnivals, shopping malls, and state fairs throughout the United States and Canada. Some consider this to be a missing link between man and ape, while others believe it's evidence that Bigfoot and Sasquatch are real. The Smithsonian stated that they were on the side of believing it was nothing more but a hoax, while others, like Scientific American, believed it to be real. That was after having only one examination of the creature. But what about you? Do you think this was real? Mississippi. This one has a strange feel of authenticity to it, and I'm going to show you the recording in just a second, but essentially, it's a Bigfoot ripping off the bark of a tree and then stands up. If you saw my first video, you'd know that Mississippi has its own history of the Chattawa monster being very ape-like. So this clip here makes it feel as though there's even more validity to the existence of a large bipedal primate in the woods of Mississippi. What do you think? Bigfoot or hoax? Missouri. Unlike most on this list, the legend of giants in Missouri is not a myth or folklore of any kind, but a proven fact. In 1933, the remains of seven individuals were found. 
Six of them were what was expected. They were of average height, but the seventh, that was an astonishing eight feet, four inches tall, without shoes. The man who found the remains was J.D. Crane at Lake of the Ozarks. There's not much to be said other than this was either an abnormally large person or this really was a giant. Montana. If you ever find yourself drowning in Lake Flathead, I'd start calling out for Flessy, the Flathead Lake Monster which doesn't really seem like a monster at all. Flessy's first appearance was in 1889 when a captain and 100 steamboat passengers spotted an unusually large creature in the waters. Some reported it to be 20 feet long while others insisted that it was at least 40 feet, but the majority all agreed it had steel black eyes. And despite the name, it doesn't seem like much of a monster at all. In 2017, a three-year-old little boy was found soaked at the end of a dock. He said he couldn't swim and fell in, but that a monster in the lake lifted him out of the water. We gotta protect this one. I'm just saying, most things of this size probably would have just had a kid's meal right then and there. Nebraska. Sorry ladies, but this monster is no Edward Cullen. The Custer County Chief of Nebraska reported that in 1896 and the month of January, residents were complaining about what seems to be a vampire. Now this could be written off had they not seen the man with their own eyes. He would viciously attack cattle and man alike like a savage beast. Not only that, but the wildlife of the area as well. People reported seeing this man ripping animals apart with his bare hands. Some even said that they would watch as he lapped up the blood of his victims, the way a dog laps up water. This man even attacked a cowboy by the name of Jack Lewis, but failed and was scared off into the night but only after Lewis had fired several shots at the man. After this, the vampire man was never seen again. Probably moved on to easier prey. Nevada. This one only has one recent encounter, but since it was mentioned in Kansas, I felt that perhaps adding this account could give some more validity to this story. In 2015, two men from California were traveling near Winnemucca, Nevada, when they saw something on the highway that shouldn't have been there. They were traveling on Interstate 80 when their headlights shone onto a creature that had a long thin neck, a long beak, and a head with a crest. The massive creature struggled to get airborne as the men continued driving their vehicle and barely missed it as it jumped into the air and flew off. One of the men identified it as a pterosaur and again, if these animals are still being seen, how long ago did they really live? New Hampshire From what I read, it looks as though this monster only has one account but for good reason. Most people aren't going to go into underwater caves in a lake, so it's probably why most people haven't seen them. A diver had gone into a cave system in Dublin Lake to explore what there was within it, and after he had gone down, he didn't come back up for several days. Later on, he was found naked and in shock. He kept rambling on and on about some sort of monsters he had encountered in the caves. If you're looking for evidence of these creatures and what they look like, sadly there is none. This very well may be a hoax, but... If you're so bold to believe that, why don't you go into the underwater caves and let us know what you find. New Jersey. In my last video, I spoke of the Jersey Devil, but this time, I want to add the possibility of something a bit kind out in the woods of the Pine Barrens. The white stag is probably best depicted as what you see in Harry Potter, a large white ghostly deer with large antlers. It's not evil. It's actually said to aid travelers that find themselves lost in the Pine Barrens. And unlike the presence of creatures like the Mothman, the White Stag is said to prevent disasters. It's even said to have stopped a stagecoach from crashing into the Batso River. The driver was at a bridge in the middle of the night when his horses refused to cross it and looked toward the river. He saw a large, white, ghostly stag, preventing his horses from passing. Once he saw it, it disappeared and he came to find that the bridge had collapsed. Maybe the horses saw the bridge, or maybe they saw the white stag. New Mexico. Again, some sort of creature appearing like that of an extinct animal was seen in where it was believed to have lived before it went extinct. You may feel as though this is a thunderbird, or perhaps simply put, a teratorn, a gigantic bird of sorts. Get this. They were seen flying over the land of enchantment, all the way up into the 1800s. But that's not all. They've also been seen flying over the Doña Ana Mountains and outside of Las Cruces today. Somehow, now the legends of Thunderbirds and more seem like they weren't just legends meant to serve as a message, but something more. New York. 
Last time, people didn't like that I had a person for New York, but that was mostly to avoid having non-stop Bigfoot-type creatures, which is basically what the wild men are. Most think of non-stop city life in New York, but there's a great deal of wilderness outside of the city. The first report of these wild men, or wild man, was all the way back in 1818, near the New York-Canada border. Somebody had seen what they said was a gentleman of unquestionable veracity. He was covered in fur and stooped over running through the woods. The townsfolk went on a hunt for this wild man, but turned up empty-handed. Then, in 1838, a young hunter saw what he thought to be a little boy, but covered in fur. And again, in 1869, a group of nearly 100 people saw one of these wild men in Steuben County. So yeah, the city has its dangers, but so do the woods. North Carolina. If you want to see a mermaid but are terrified of the depth of the oceans and what could be hiding within it, how about you just go to a place known as Mermaid Point in North Carolina? This legend has roots all the way back to the 1700s when soldiers of the Revolutionary War would, uh, they'd have a lot of punch by the river and then would see the mermaids. The mermaids were said to travel upstream to wash out their hair of seawater. And it's also an opinion that the British occupancy had scared the mermaids off in this direction as well. There's not any modern day sightings, but there's a slew of Native American beliefs that speak of mermaid-like creatures. Maybe this is one of them. North Dakota. The Native Americans of North Dakota spoke of a creature that lived in Devil's Lake, very similar to that of the Uktena of Cherokee legend. The first official account of this creature comes from the New York Sun, a newspaper that spoke of the serpent-like creature in North Dakota. The descriptions all state that it had a jaw like that of an alligator, glaring red eyes, was about 80 feet long and typically appears in August around the time the sun is setting. It's said to be green and appears to be slimy. Some skeptics question how this creature would have even gotten here, and the Native Americans say that it was stranded after the glacier's retreat, which means this serpent would have a lifespan of around 9,000 years. Ohio. This was mentioned in the last video, so I figured, sure, let's look into frogmen. Not the scuba divers, but literal frog people. The story where this man saw them varies, but regardless, in 1955, a man was traveling through Loveland, Ohio when he saw three unnatural creatures. They were around three to four feet tall and communicating with one another, albeit through unknown means. They were around three to four feet tall and communicating with one another. They had leathery skin and their faces were like that of a frog. In addition to speaking with one another, they also had a wand which scared the man. First, there's frog people, but now we have what seems like a magic wand of sorts. If they weren't seen again in 2016 by a couple playing Pokemon Go, I'd probably ignore this whole story, but what do you think? Could these frogmen still be out there? Or was it nothing at all? Oklahoma. This was a fairly difficult one to find information on, but basically, the boar man is very similar to the goat man, but in boar form. How he came to be is ultimately unknown, but the story is said to go all the way back to ancient Greece with monsters such as the Minotaur being its inspiration. It's said to be between six to eight feet tall and uses his tusks to claim his victims. But this could also be accounted to the fact that there are boars in Oklahoma, which are quite ferocious themselves. Sightings go back to the 1920s and at one point even made headlines in the local newspaper. Most people believe this to be nothing but a hoax, but still, would you want to risk going out in the woods unarmed? Oregon. Claude is said to be anywhere between 15 to 40 feet in length, with an 8 foot long neck. Its body is tan in color, with a head like that of a snake and a serpentine tail. It's a lot like the Loch Ness Monster. The first reported sighting was in 1934 by L.A. Larson. He was the first mate of the Columbia River Lightship, but then was seen again in 1937 by a crew of fishermen, and then again in 1939 by a halibut fishing crew. In the latter account, it's said that the colossal Claude reared up over the water just 10 feet away from the hull of their ship. It must not have been very threatening because the men supposedly watched as Claude ate some fish before they turned away and left the creature. I guess Geralt was right. Not all that's ugly is a monster, and not all monsters are ugly. Pennsylvania. This comes not just from kooks in the outskirts of a town, but from a scholarly man. The man was known as Shoemaker and wrote a number of papers. He was a writer and folklorist, yes, but not one to make up stories. He had an air of gravity within all of his works, and his twelfth paper, which was 14 pages, had the same level of earnestness. He tells of a story that most likely occurred in the 1850s in Tioga County. A man who would later become governor spoke of a man he knew, 
Richard Durya. According to William, Richard was suspected of dealing with the black art, but that's all that was known. It's said that Durya was dying, two of his neighbors stayed up to help him, in case there was any need of anything. They watched as a large black wolf entered Durya's room and then left. Durya was dead, and it's believed that the wolf was only there to perform a sort of werewolf last rites. Maybe werewolves do exist after all. Rhode Island The sightings of this one are few and far between, but somehow are still occurring with little to no evidence. The Gloucester ghoul is said to be a large creature with the body of a ram, bat-like wings, horns protruding from its head, and stinks to high heaven. Some accounts even say its eyes have a fiery red glow, which makes it all the more terrifying. If you run into this thing, you can expect to feel a sense of dread and fear before even catching sight of it. South Carolina This is not a puppy you're going to want to run into. It's a good boy, but only to its innocent master that was said to have been unrightfully executed. The man was a traveler, accused of stealing and was wrongfully put to death, despite there not being any evidence. His doggo companion is said to have starved to death on a road while waiting for his master's return. It's on Buncombe Road, or at least on a particular five mile stretch of it. This ghost hound is said to stalk its prey, which these days are just about anyone. This dog was upset with what happened to his master, and now seems to lash out at anyone without regard of who they are. Still a good boy until proven otherwise in my book. South Dakota. This is one of those things you don't tempt. If you go out here and do what you're not supposed to do, you're just asking for whatever comes next. This mound is said to be called the Mountain of Little People, or Little Spirits by the Native Americans of this land. The little devils are said to be about a foot and a half tall and nasty little things. They've got large heads and are armed with razor sharp arrows. This wasn't documented until the early 1800s, but the legend was known to go back way further than that. So how do you avoid a horrifying and painful death by dozens of tiny arrows? Stay off the mound. But also, I'd still avoid this part of the US entirely. If little people are recorded all over the world, and here they're even being said to be taking lives, it's not worth it at that point. Just go read a book. Tennessee. Trust me on this one. If you hear unholy screeching in the depths of the forest in the middle of the night, don't go looking for it leaving your family and protected at home. Just take your things and leave the next morning. In the 1920s, a man is said to have built a home near town for his family of nine. After his home was built, the entire family was awoken almost every single night to the sound of shrieking that pierced their ears. This screaming goes on again and again and again until the man has had enough. He grabs his rifle and heads out in search of the noise, hears it once and makes his way to it, hears it again and continues into the forest. And finally, when he gets to the source of the screaming, he's led back to his home where all of his family are no more. It's better to be a dad than it is to be a Chad. Texas. Unlike wood devils, prairie devils seem to have more of a credence to its existence since most everyone believes in dinosaurs. In 1996, a woman from Mesa Verde claimed she saw something that wasn't a lizard but about three and a half feet long and about three and a half feet tall. It moved very fast. As far as I remember, there were only two legs that seemed to balance it. And to be clear, these prairie devils are said to be in multiple states, not just Texas. You may have also heard of them as river dinos, river lizards, or mini rexes. While many believe the dinosaurs died out hundreds of millions of years ago, somebody should go and tell these prairie devils that they're not supposed to be alive anymore and see what they say. Utah. If you know what real skinwalkers are, you'll probably have mixed feelings about this, but everyone was insistent that I cover them for Utah, so here you go. Skinwalkers are human practitioners of a dark form of magic. They've been popularized through Skinwalker Ranch, since it is said to be cursed with the skinwalker curse. But that's actually a myth. You can't curse an area with these people. They're regular humans that can take the form of wolves, bears, coyotes, and more. But they're not inherently evil. They're taboo and not accepted by society, but they're not bloodthirsty beasts the way the media depicts them. And also from what I've heard, their magic tends to be somewhat restricted to the area they live in. So if you're in Georgia or New York and you think your dog's been possessed by a skinwalker, you're more likely to win the lottery. I have a fuller video on my channel dedicated to the skinwalker if you'd like to know more. Vermont. Just like Bermuda, Vermont has its own triangle of strange and odd things, one of which is the Bennington Monster. The
The Bennington monster is said to have had the body of a large cat, the head of a reptile, and wings like that of a bird. People that have claimed to have seen it say it's anywhere between five to seven feet tall and has an ear-piercing scream that can be heard from miles around. And this creature is believed to be the reason behind a woman's disappearance, but she wasn't the only one. There was a total of five people who vanished without a trace between 1945 and 1950. Despite numerous searches and investigations, no one has ever been recovered, nor the monster found. If this thing is real, it's probably still out there. Virginia We typically view stories of vampires as obvious fairy tales, but for a town in rocking Virginia, this fairy tale was real. After a train collapsed, this fanged beast was first seen by William Poole's grave. It is this man that is believed to have been the vampire itself, William Wortham Poole. This is viewed as an urban legend that got warped thanks to the telephone effect. You tell me, I tell another person, and somewhere along the way, the legend of this vampire was born. If that's the case, why was this creature seen at his alleged grave? And I suppose if this truly were a vampire, then he probably doesn't leave anyone with the memory of him anyway. You can't hunt what you don't know is hunting you. Washington. This one here, I really think just needs to be turned into a movie. The Native Americans also believe this creature to exist and is just an evil spirit capable of great power, but the legend of how it came to the lake is equally as interesting. A captain from Scotland brought a treasure chest that was taken from Fort Augustus. It was believed to be full of gold and valuables, but the captain knew what was really inside. Somehow their ship was transported to the Chalin Lake, where a horde storm ravaged and capsized the ship. The captain jumped in after the chest, not wanting to let go of what was hidden inside. Along with the captain, two female stowaways also jumped in as the men struggling not to drown watched in awe and wonder. As the women hit the water, they turned into mermaids. One of them retrieved the chest and stowed it in an underwater cave while the other saved the captain's life. But at this point it was too late. The chest was open and the object inside was an egg. A dragon's egg that cracked and out popped a hatchling. This could be summed up as a story, but years later a local newspaper covered the story of a man who was saved by his two friends by pulling him out of the water as a creature held onto him. The legs and body of an alligator, but the head and eyes of a snake. It also had a scaly tail and bat wings. West Virginia. This is one monster you're probably safe from since it hasn't been seen since 1952. The Flatwoods monster is in reference to what was described as a 10 foot monster with a blood red body and green face that seemed to glow. The people that reported it could just be making all of it up if one of them hadn't peed their pants. And I'm not sure how many teenagers in the 50s were willing to wreck their pants and reputation all in the name of a hoax. But this is one creature I'm happy just calling a mystery. Wisconsin. Even the Nikita Sioux had a bad name for this lake. They called it Mdewakan, which means bad spirit. They would send out scouts and warriors to the lake for hunting trips, only for their screams to be heard by others as they were dragged underneath the Devil's Lake. This creature is said to be a sort of Loch Ness type monster, which is often depicted as a plesiosaur. Is it truly possible that these ancient beasts have managed to survive their alleged extinction? Could there be underwater tunnels and caves that connect lakes we've never seen before? Maybe that's what the strange carcass was that Maribel Loom discovered in the 50s. Or maybe that was just its offspring. It was 22 feet long, with what was described as having the body of a cow, approximately nine tails, and hair all over the body and legs. Whatever this is, it sounds as though it truly does have a home in the depths of Devil's Lake. Wyoming. While many of these creatures have their origins based hundreds if not thousands of years ago, the Casper Mountain Crawler gained its fame from a TikTok video. This is what the uploader had to say about his viral video. Whenever I recorded whatever I recorded, I wasn't going to sit there and record it because I was running for my life, okay? And I'm not trying to be funny about this. Literally, I was puking. Unfortunately, some people on the internet are desperate for attention, and it's made us forget that sometimes people aren't faking it for the clout. But you tell me what you think from the video. Also, I want to give a shout out to AP for joining me on Patreon and helping support the work that I do. Thank you so much, and if you'd like to help support me, then you can find the link down in the description. 
Or if you want one more reason to, then you can check out my first video on the 50 monsters hiding in the US. And just remember, where mystery lies, adventure awaits.